Hey friends, thanks for joining me for another read aloud. I know how much you love the story of the bad, bad seed and I just po um, posted that to our seesaw. So I thought, what better book to go to next than the good egg? So here's the good egg. If you remember how it goes, follow along with me. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy. I'd like to say thank you to Scholastic for allowing me to read this to you today. This is The Good Egg by Jory John and Pete Oswald. The Good Egg. Front cover. The Good Egg by Jory John and Pete Oswald. Oh, hello. I was just rescuing this cat. Know why? Because I'm a good egg. A very good egg. It's true. I do all kinds of good things like I'll carry your groceries, I'll water your plants, I'll change your tires, I'll paint your house. If you need any help whatsoever, I'm your egg. I've always been a good egg. It's been this way from the very start, even in my earliest days, back at the store. There were a dozen of us living together under one recycled roof. There is Meg and Peg and Greg and Clegg and Shell and Shelly and Sheldon and Shelby and Egbert and Frank and other Frank. The other 11 eggs weren't on their best behavior. They weren't exactly good. They ignored their bedtime they only ate sugary cereal. They threw tantrums. They cried for no reason. They broke their stuff on purpose. Meanwhile, I tried to take charge. I tried to fix their bad behavior. I tried to keep the peace because I was a good egg. A very good egg. Nobody seemed to care though. Every night I was exhausted. My head felt scrambled. Then, one fateful morning, I noticed cracks in my shell. They were everywhere. Well, he has a little sign on his back that says, kick me, and it says, yikes, up here. That wasn't very kind to ever put that on his back. My doctor said it was from all the pressure I was putting on myself, the pressure of making sure everybody was as good as me. I was cracking up, literally. Something had to change. I'd had enough. I told Meg and Peg and Greg and Clegg and Shell and Shelly and Sheldon and Shelby and Egbert and Frank, another Frank, that I was leaving. I can't be the only good egg in a bad carton, I said. Blah, 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 they all replied. I left that night. I wandered from town to town. The hours became days, the days became weeks. I lost track of time. I was alone. Out there on the road under the stars, I tried to really, oops, I really tried to focus on myself and what I needed. I took walks, I read books, I floated in the river, I wrote in my journal, 
I found simple moments to be quiet. I breathed in. I breathed out. I even started painting. For once, I found time for me. And guess what? Little by little, the cracks in my shell started to heal. My head no longer felt scrambled. I started to feel like myself again. So I've made a big decision. I'm returning to my old carton and my friends. Besides, I'm kind of lonely out here. This time I know what to do. I'll try not to worry so much. I'll be good to my fellow eggs while also being good to myself. Here we go. Everybody missed me. I missed them too. Hello, Meg. Howdy, Peg. Hey, Greg. Greetings, Clegg. What's up, Shell? Aloha, Shelly. Hey, -o, Sheldon. Hi, Shelby. Good day, Egbert. What's happening, Frank? How do you do? Other Frank. Oh, and they have a sign that says, Welcome home. Sure. Every once in a while, somebody's still a little bit bad. But it's not like before. Here's what I realized. The other eggs aren't perfect. And I don't have to be either. I'm okay with that. The old carton is back together. We're a solid dozen again, and it's good to be home. And that was The Good Egg by Jory, John, and Pete Oswald. I wanna go back to a page in the story that stuck out to me. It was this part here where he said, out here or out there on the road, under the stars, I tried, I really tried to focus on myself and what I needed. And then the page after that showed a bunch of different things that he did to take care of himself. It's what he needed. Sometimes he needed to take a walk. Sometimes he needed to read books or to float in the river, to write in his journal to just breathe in and breathe out. He's taking a bath here. Maybe other times he just needed to paint. All of us right now, while we're at home, have those times where we really, really need to just think about ourselves and what we need. So when I'm at home, the things that I need sometimes, sometimes I like to just read books by myself other times I like to go outside and take walks. I've even done some painting and some cooking. So I'm wondering, what have you been doing at home? What are the kinds of things that you need to do to take care of yourself? Maybe for you that's playing, maybe it's drawing. I don't know. Well, whatever it is, go ahead and send me a video or a recording or um, some typed out words and share with me what you do at home to take care of yourself. I can't wait to hear all of your answers. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time. Bye.